Hi, this is Sandy with the Reflex Live Loop and the new Slice Groove Sequencer Clock Capability. First I'll get a sample up and running and slice it using Peak Slicer and add my own voice to it so the slices are different sounding. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now to test some slices. One, two, the one, slice two, loop three, can four, be five, on or six, off, seven, but using the button they will play through when the loop is off, which is kind of great for rearranging an existing rhythm, as you can hear it all. Now hold the slice button and tap the record to enter slice groove sequencer. Tap slice with your beats and then tap record to play them back. As long as the record is tapped on the downbeat, it'll line up nicely. Now for the new feature, Derived Clock Output. The number of beats per bar is decided what, what, from your what, clock two, divider three. setting. What, what, it is what, set at 8 two, right three. now for these examples. Four, five, four, five, six, if the BPM six, comes out between four, five, 60 and 120 five, six, BPM, six, this is true. Four, five, Faster four, five, beats will be divided six, down. Four, five, Notice the kick from the clock output keeps going during recording a new sequence. This helps you stay in sync. But just selecting away from the clock output will mute it without affecting timing if you want to change the tempo. Inputting a clock to slice groove sequencer is done through the slice jack. Once a clock is detected, the sequencer switches to clock step mode, which is why this sequence has changed. There's no longer the break in tempo. This is why when recording a clock sequence, a gate input is also required. The clock will step the sequence while the gate trigger slice is selected by the knob and slice CV input. Recording a sequence, you can hear only steps that have a gate or trigger will be played, but the clock keeps time. Keeping sync with a sequence is easy. Here's how it works. When you want to record the sequence, it's a simple tap on the slice button. But wait, the actual recording won't begin until a clock window lines up. So tapping it will only arm the record, which will wait for an alignment point. Because I have the clock divider set to 8 right now, every 8 clocks will provide a window to execute the arming of recording a sequence, or playing a sequence. If you tapped into an existing clock underway, tapping the slice button again when recording will set the alignment point to the following clock pulse. Now the sequencer is aligned. Now I'll change the clock divider to 4. This will allow short sequences or sequences offset for 12, 24, etc. Here's a 12 step sequence. Now switch back to 8 steps or 2 times 4 steps. The sequences can be up to 192 clock steps long when in SGS clock mode. And switching back to 8 or 2 fours. Now for a longer sequence. Notice how the slice offset can be shifted on the fly. This now has better indication too by holding the selected LED longer instead of jumping around immediately with the CV input after the knob has been moved. The red slice LED moves with the clock and is on, a, on solid when recording the sequence, like right now. Bop, bop, bop. 
By holding record TFCN, the clock divider can now be set back to 8. Tapping to set and exit, and turning off the slice trigger output just by selecting away from it, which was controlling the kick. As you can see, the sequence can be sped up quite quickly. Slice trigger output keeps up. Sequences can be recorded at this rate and faster. At this speed, it doesn't really need to line up except on 4s, 8s, or 16s. Time to take a break and add some stutter effects. I've changed the patch so the clock and gate are from the same source so all of the slices in the sequence will play. Manually selected slices are recorded. At this speed, slices are very short and all of the starts of the slices are getting chopped off. So using play effects, the slice start is adjusted to where there is audio. Time to do a different sequence to end the video. Slices are erased. Now creating some new peak slices. The slice groove sequencer mode doesn't switch to clock step mode until a clock pulse is detected on the slice input, which is the bottom most jack. So a sequence can be tested before entering SGS without the clock signal. The sequence's sample rate is also recorded, so let's try that by feeding in an LFO into the uh, rate CV, and then recording a sequence. Now just the clock input is controlling the slice sequence step. With stutter on, you can hear the micro loops frequencies. This new slice groove sequencer clock edition will be included in the next version update. Cheers!